in China. So in this episode, we will show you more about cotton picking, especially machinized cotton picking. So people love to wear clothes made from cotton because it's very breathable and very comfortable. And will you enjoy the benefits it brings? Do you know where it comes from and do you know how it harvested? So in this episode, you could see that we have a lot of the uh, cutting edge technologies help us. Like joints, I uh, hope you can see in the, our live picture. And also the OD machines. ODs help us to wear the cotton from the field to the machine to the uh, cotton mills and the uh, textile industries and then fin finally we can buy the finished products. So we know that China is best known for its silk. It's now also the world's largest cotton producer and Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in northwest China is home to the country's largest cotton field. In early September, the white fluffy hair that grows inside the cotton ball is exposed to the air. They stretch out for more sunlight as if telling farmers that they are ready to be picked. So harvesting lasts around 50 days, normally from early September to late October. And first I show you the number in 2018 and then we'll also update it to your number by the end of 2020. So in 2018, the cotton yield in Xinjiang reached 5.11 million tons, accounting for 83.8% of the national output. And the cultivation of cotton in Xinjiang dates back to the late Western Han Dynasty, that's around 206 BC to 24 AD. According to historical records, the cotton introduced from West Asia to Xinjiang and also in the ruins of Lowland Kingdom in Xinjiang, cotton pieces actually were found there, indicating their long history in the region. Cotton soon spread in Xinjiang owing to the region's ample sunlight and moderate rainfall, which the plant needs. And looking at this vast area, so Xinjiang is famous for its long staple cotton, the long fiber, pure white color as you can see in this screen, and the strong tensho strands all make it a hit among customers. In the past, people mainly pick the cotton by hand, but you're looking at here, we rarely seen a human being working in this field because right now machines have gradually replaced manual work. In northern Xinjiang, over 80% of cotton is harvested, machiner, machinized, machine, machinized, and also the use of machines prevents the cotton from being contaminated and improves its quality. After bags of cotton are packed and transported to various factories, they become clothes, toys, and other textiles that we see in our daily life. So cotton's always considered 
uh, see a faster resources here and also earn a nickname here as white gold so here you're looking at this is a place in Aksu Aksu is one of the a cities along the a ancient Silk Road but right now you're looking at today we still bring you this ancient city but right now looking at this this is, has a something new on top of its traditional value because we see right now the white gold on the ancient Silk Road So if you're tuning in with CGT New Media about our previous special program into Xinjiang, we brought you different terrains here in Xinjiang from the wetlands along the coastal to the dense rainforest hidden in the southwest and all boasts a array of plant species and we also here at today's special program we bring you more about this most iconic flora in Xinjiang and also we call it white gold so looking at it, this is a place from Aksu in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region and we talk about Aksu County located quite at the center place of Xinjiang and it's the city seat and the a Aksu prefecture of Xinjiang lying at the northern edge of Tarim Basin. The Aksu County is with a warm temperature continental climate, rich in water, soil, sunlight, heat, and wind resources. It's very drought and a little rain and also long hours of sunshine sufficient temperature especially heat and also the a quite big temperature differences between day and night ODs actually create a very favorable condition to plant cotton so here we can see that the a cotton from Xinjiang is very good quality and especially it has very long fiber, a very good bright color, very pure white color and also elast elastic. It's very strong, it's very provide really good resilience and also very high quality. In 2020, last year, the county, the Aksu County, planted 1.4 million mu of cotton or 94,706 hectares of cotton with a total output of 190 million more tons, of which 979,800 mu of land cotton and also 440,800 mu of long staple cotton and also they used water saving drip irrigation and also have a large the, a area of the a machine picked cotton So in year 2021, this year, the a Avati County in Aksu Prefecture also built the a cotton seed breeding base as an opportunity to optimize the layout of cotton planting structure. And the aim is to promote its the a brand of long staple cotton and increase the efficiency of water saving drip irrigation planting and also improve the quality of cotton as well.
So this year they also have the a uh, try the different the categories or the a uh, varieties of the a uh, cottons. I hope to grow more the a uh, long staple cotton and we talk about long staple cotton actually it's good to make t-shirts and clothes because it's very good textile materials and also we use that the a long staple cotton also for other uses like uh, right now we send our taconos to the a china built the a space station actually the rocket also used cotton as well So we talk about cotton actually has many different uses and also looking at this is machinery we talk about agricultural machinization here in Xinjiang with the continuous progress of science and technology you're looking at the level of agricultural machinization is constantly improving farmers from the previous like, cultivation with two cattles right now you're looking at it just like some farmers, they just drive these kind of machines or even they actually hire someone to drive the machine to cultivate cotton. So we just talk about this city, the city of the uh, Abatai, that's the uh, city in the Aksu prefecture. Right now, in this city alone, it has around 15,223 machines. And also among which 680 actually also equipped with the navigation system. And also that uh, they can drive by itself. Uh, 260 drones as well and also at the beginning of our show we also look at the a presence of drone there and we look at the a cotton right now not the a cotton picking and the top cotton deploying actually all machinized Here in this city, the full machinization rate of cotton reaches more than 80% and 8,843 tons of the a, covers, the a cotton covers or the film are used in year 2020. So we talk about why Xinjiang cotton is good quality. But Xinjiang natural ecological condition makes it one of the world's most suitable region for cotton planting. The dry climate with long period of sunshine and the little rain makes the region a hub for some of China's finest cotton products. Access to sunshine is also necessary for production and nurturing of its fiber. Xinjiang gets about 3,500 3, hours of sunshine a year, make it top in China. The temperature difference between night and day also make it suitable planting sea island cotton, believed to be the best in the world. The cotton is a resilient plant, can withstand Xinjiang's dry land conditions, and the region's intense winters also result in few pests, improving yield and reducing costs for cotton, cotton production. And modern technologies also plays a key role here. The best advantages of the whole cotton picking process does not touch the ground, the cost of transporting cotton has been reduced to a large extent. The operation is high efficient and can cover three hectares of land every hour. 
Official data shows that up to 75% of the region's cotton was harvested by machines at the end of 2020. Other technologies, including drones used to boost position crop spraying, the conditions in Xinjiang contribute to China's output, making it one of the world's top five cotton producers and one of the biggest importers. Right now you're looking at this is live coverage brought to you by CGT New Media. We have two teams on the ground to cover Xinjiang from different angles and to introduce additional beauty of Xinjiang. And this is one of our special coverage into Xinjiang. And today we bring you a view of cotton fields, especially we bring you a very special angle on the machine to tell you how the machine help us to cultivate and harvest cotton. And the machine actually can cover three hectares per hour. So China produces nearly 30% of the world's cotton, of which 83 87.3% or equivalent to 5.2 million tons of cotton comes from Xinjiang. That's the a data according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Besides massive exports, China itself is also the world's largest consumer of cotton and related textile product products. To meet the huge domestic demand, it also imports some 2 million tons of cotton from Brazil, India, and several other countries each year. The total cotton cultivation area in Xinjiang reached 37.52 million mu or 6.18 million hectares. So we bring you from different angles, especially the a close shot of all these machines. So the a total cotton cultivation area in the region reached 6.18 million acres last year. In northern Xinjiang, cotton harvesting has largely been machinized, while southern Xinjiang has its machinization rate raised above 40%. According to the a Xinjiang Region's Agricultural Bureau, machinized harvesting of cotton in the region accounted for 69.83, nearly 70% in 2020. The machinization in cotton harvest has been growing at a rate much faster than expected over the years. And before the era of a high machinization dawned on this once impoverished region, people from inland provinces usually came over to help the harvest during the summertime. And it's long been a tradition for villagers in Henan to go to work at the field in Xinjiang. Though such seasonal labor, they could earn more to support their family. So the period from normally August to October is the peak season and also the busiest time for farming in Xinjiang. So 
after looking at this, the, a large area of white gold. And we could see that a lot of work actually be over-machinized. And the cotton have been picked by machines and also packed as well by the same machine, by the same truck, you could call it. And after the harvest season, the fresh cotton goes to textile factories nearby. In recent years, more yarn mills have been built in large cotton producing areas to facilitate local residents to work off seasons while saving costs for long haul transportation to inland factories. So looking at this is a place in Awat, a county under southern Xinjiang's Aksu prefecture, and reputed as the town of cotton. Awat produces one-fifth of the world's long staple cotton with silkier and more durable fibers, filling markets from Europe to North America. So you're looking at the cotton Right now, this is from the, a place called Town of Cotton. And also it has one of the best quality of long staple cotton. And also is export to markets from Europe to North America. So look at all these machines, very busy because this is right now the a busiest season here in Xinjiang to harvest this year's cotton and we also call this the white gold. And this is the city of it at the a southern Xinjiang Aksu prefecture and this is also the place called the town of cotton. And also it produced one-fifth of the world's long staple cotton with silkier, lustrous, and more durable fibers. So I hope our viewers can see drones as well. So this place you're looking at actually is so machinized. We only could see machines and drones working there. And also this is quite the atypical scene here in Xinjiang during its cotton harvesting season. And according to the official data, up to 75% of the region's cotton was harvested by machines at the end of 2020. Other technologies, including drones used to boost position corpse spraying, the conditions in Xinjiang contribute to China's output, make it one of China, the world's top five cotton producers and one of the biggest importers. With the development of machinized cotton harvest in China, over 1 million hectares of cotton in its northeastern Xinjiang Uyghur Tonos region have been harvested by machines since 2020. More than 90% of the cotton production in northern Xinjiang is highly machinized, while southern Xinjiang has raised its machinization rate to about 40% in cotton harvesting.
who will always talk about seeing is believing. So through our angles, brought you by CCT New Media. I hope our viewers can see a true picture here in Xinjiang. Nah, and this is hope you enjoy a view of cotton field in Xinjiang's Uyghur Autonomous Region. And this is the a very busy season right now because normally from August to October, that's the busy season here in Xinjiang with all the machines you're looking at, actually are busy doing their job to picking cottons. To all the viewers, if you're just tuning in with CGT New Media, this is our special program into Xinjiang. Today we bring you a very special angle and I'm so let you enjoy a view of cotton fields. So here you rarely seen the human beings working in the field, but all the machines actually are doing these jobs to replace the manual works. Here is the Awati in Xinjiang Aksu Prefecture. And this is the a place in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Uh, looking at all these, this place actually also enjoying the fame as the town of cotton. It's always produced very high quality, long staple cotton. And also it's cotton is a one of the a key resources for exporting to fill the markets in Europe and North America. So talking about why is still back to the question, why Xinjiang's cotton is so qual high quality? And we're looking at Xinjiang's natural ecological condition that makes it one of the world's most suitable region for cotton planting. The dry climate with a long period of sunshine and a little rain makes the region a hub for some of China's finest cotton products. Access to sunshine is also necessary for production and reaching of its fiber. Xinjiang gets about 3,500 hours of sunshine a year, making it top in China. The temperature difference between day and night also makes it suitable to plant sea island cotton, believed to be the best in the world. You know, cotton is a resilient plant that can withstand Xinjiang's dry land conditions. The region's intense winter also results in few pests, improving yield and reducing costs for corpse production and protection. Modern technology also plays an important role here. The best advantages of the whole cotton picking process does not touch the ground. The cost of transporting cotton has been reduced to a large extent. The operation is high efficient and can cover three hectares of land every hour. Official data also shows that up to 75% of the region's cotton was harvested by machines at the end of year 2020. Other technologies including drones used to boost precision corpse spring. The conditions in Xinjiang contribute to China's output, making it one of the world's top five cotton producers and one of the biggest importers. Uh, with the development, development of machinized cotton harvest in China, over one million hectares of cotton in its northeastern Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region has been harvested by machines since year 2020, and more than 90% of the cotton production 
in northern Xinjiang is highly machinized, while southern Xinjiang has also raised its machinization rate to about 40% in cotton harvesting. So we'll bring you from different angles to show our viewers that this is the real Xinjiang and also it's happening now here in Xinjiang. Right now it's the a peak season and the busy season here in Xinjiang for cotton harvesting. You rarely can see human beings in the field. And right now you're looking at the a majority of the manual work actually right now is placed by machines. So machine basically doing be a lot of work here so you help to harvest cotton and also at the same time is packed the cotton so cotton actually after harvested is packed as different packages or cotton bags left on the ground and later on these bags of cottons transport to the a local factories nearby so that also saved a lot of cost So we talk about China produced nearly 30% of the world cotton, of which 87% equivalent to 5 million tons of cotton comes from Xinjiang. And so we're looking at to meet the, a huge domestic demand, China also imports some 2 million tons of cotton from Brazil, India, and several other countries each year. The total cotton cultivation area in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region reached 37.52 million mu or 6.18 million acres last year. And in northern Xinjiang, cotton harvesting has largely been machinized, while southern Xinjiang has its machinization rate raised about 40%. According to Xinjiang Regional Agricultural Bureau, machinized harvesting of cotton in the region accounted for 70% in 2020. And the machinization in cotton harvest has been growing at a rate much faster than expected over the years. After the harvest season, the fresh cotton goes to textile factories nearby. And in recent years, more yarn mills have been built in large cotton producing areas to facilitate local residents to work off seasons while saving costs for long haul transportation to inland factories. Looking at here, this is a county under southern Xinjiang's Aksu Prefecture, and the county here also reputed as the town of cotton because it produced one fifth of the world's long staple cotton with silkier, lustrous, and more durable fibers, filling markets from Europe to North America.
So looking at here, we still talk about this is the a live of coverage. This is a live footage brought you by CGT New Media. We have two teams, ground in Xinjiang to bring you different beauty from different angles to bring you a real Xinjiang. And this is also CGT and New Media special program into Xinjiang. And looking at here, basically nearly 70% of cotton harvesting actually already been machinized. So we talk about although it's already 70%, but still have some work made by the a villagers. So it's a long tradition. It's long been a tradition for villagers in other provinces, especially in Henan, to go to work the field in Xinjiang. It's the, a seasonal labor, but they could earn more to support their family. So normally the period from August to October see a busy time for farming in Xinjiang. Those from the provinces went to the region in order to pick the cash crop a trend that lasted for almost two decades. So talk about cotton picking, that's a seasonal job, has a long history in Northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Tunnels region, and many people from different parts of China would flock to the region during harvest time. So we also interviewed a couple here in Xinjiang. So the cotton picking in Xinjiang, Southern Xinjiang's cotton hub was once their main source of income. From seven in the morning to seven in the evening, the two of them could gather about 250 kilograms of cotton and they could earn about 400 to 500 yuan or 61 to 76 US dollars per day. The couple said that back in the day, they could earn up to 20,000 yuan or about 3,060 US dollars in just two months. So much higher than the a current average monthly income of the Chinese farmers. So picking cotton actually see a mate them earn a lot of money in a very short time period. The job helped some locals make a decent life for themselves. As machines are becoming a common sight in Xinjiang's cotton fields, only a few pieces of field in southern Xinjiang still need manual efforts during harvest season. So many locals said that they know that better opportunities lie in the years ahead and they no longer need to rely on picking cotton alone. So we also talked to a lady work in the factory here in this place. Right now we're looking at it. this is the place in southern Xinjiang's Aksu prefecture. And this place reputed as the town of cotton because it produced one-fifth of the world's long staple cotton 
with best quality filling markets from Europe to North America. So we talk about if the a field no longer needs a, a cotton pickers, then what kind of job they could do. So we also talked to a lady working in the cotton mills. So the lady actually stayed away from being a housewife and she also can earn living and boost household income. Before that, she only could earn around 960 RMB, and right now she could earn 2,300 to 2,500 yuan per month. So that could be a big help to her family, especially for the education of the kids. So in these yarn mills. According to her, that she has more time to care for her two children since she works 12 hour shifts and then rests for the following 24 hours, like most employees in the region's cotton mills do. Another textile worker, so we also talked to, actually she started working here in 2010 and now responsible for leading one of the mills. She makes 2,800 to 3,000 yuan after tax each month. Like most of their colleagues, the A2 Uyghur women mainly attend to outside machines that are responsible for much of the A spinning labor. And I hope our viewers can see this actually what we refer to as the A huge bags of cotton. And looking at all these bags of cotton, actually, that's directly from the machine. The machine first harvest the cotton and also at the same time within inside the machine actually help to pack the just harvested cotton into these different bags so this is what we say right now nearly 70 percent of the jobs are all machinized and oh looking at all these bags of cotton will very soon transport to the nearby cotton mills so that also created more jobs for the locals and also hope our viewers can see just at the tail of the machine that actually the place where we could find the a well-packed bags and they were left on the ground on in the field. So right now we looked, could see that machinization actually has been improved very fast and the only some pieces of field in southern Xinjiang still need some help of human beings but we talk about still the majority of the places right now in Xinjiang actually all rely highly on machines we could see that the a cotton picking machines and also the drones as well so the a advanced technologies really help to free people's hands and also improve the productivity and efficiency here in the cotton field. Then we talk about the a cotton mills, the yarn mills. I've seen more of them actually recently established nearby the cotton producing areas, creating more jobs for the locals. Training people to process cotton requires significant time and resources. And according to the a factories commodity Depart department, 
the a tremendous effort that has gone into its employees seems to have paid off. Right now, we could see that many bags left on the ground that's harvested by machines. So looking at this vast places, actually just we could really see human beings. We only could see that the a many bags of cotton and also the human beings, the only humans we could see here as the a drivers of the machines. And once again, looking at this is the special coverage of Into Xinjiang. Today we bring you the a special wheel here in Xinjiang. And right now this is the a business time as well here in the field because it's the cotton harvesting season here. We're looking at right now nearly 70% of the work actually done by machine. And the machines, the a harvest, the cotton, and at the same time, it's just within the machine, it helps to pack all these cottons. And so you could see that the already packed uh, cottons in different bags, and then very soon they will be transported to the nearby factories and yarn mills. So looking at the a yield actually in Xinjiang is keeping improving and the quality is always in line with the best quality standard. We talk about the whole temperature, the climate is very helping and also right now in recent years the a local authorities and also farmers with the a companies work together to improve the cotton seeds and also the way of irrigation. So the advanced irrigation technology also improved cotton production. Good amounts of water and fertile soil necessary to grow high quality cotton in northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Thomas region, abundant sunlight, dry air, and a big temperature differences between day and night give the local cotton its outstanding texture and appearance. But the irrigation was once a challenge in oasis areas, meaning Xinjiang farmers needed to find a way forward from their position on the edge of China's largest desert. The cotton producers have long used agricultural technologies to get the best out of what they produce, including drip irrigation, which allows water to drip slowly to the roots of plants. And the farmers plant cotton seed at the same time as they cover plowed cotton fields with specialized plastic film. And also the a local cotton farmers said that he had seen an increase in the, the efficiency of a fertilizer after adopting drip irrigation and the fertigation techniques that significantly boost yields. So cotton directly absorbs from the root and does not waste anything.
and last year, China's National Agricultural Technology Extension and Service Center issued special irrigation guidelines for Xinjiang aimed not only at reducing the loss of water and soil but also focusing on the harvest. The region has seen increasing cotton yield per hectare since last year as new planting techniques are developed and promoted. So according to the local cotton farmers, the, the, in the past, the cotton that they planted in the flood irrigation area was a little yellow, but now the cotton they irrigate with drip irrigation is white and good. The high quality means higher prices and income. And as cotton production also shifts gradually from manual to machinized, so to have the a pace of work and the living conditions of local cotton farmers changed. What they need to do in the busy spring planting season now is to look after the plowing and sewing machines and replenish drip tape, film and seed. So there are fewer workers, but they have more income. It usually took at least four to five people to work on such a large piece of land for reaching and topping, but now it's very easy for only one to do so. There are the uh, other considerable efforts made by the local authorities to maintain a balance between the economic benefits of cotton and the residents' long-term well-being. For one, producers keep cotton fields small and scattered. This leaves room for trees, a natural barrier against sandstorms that slow down desertification. And Xinjiang's cotton producers have joined the Stockholm Convention. The convention holds an even higher standard that the so that also reflects the a resolve of the people in Xinjiang to keep the, the efficiency of cotton planting and harvesting and also in line with the a world-class quality. So it's, as we're saying that it's the same for cotton planting and cotton harvesting, you really could see human being really busy like hiding their hats inside the cotton field. What you could see here that we have just machines very busy working in the field and this is the reality here in Xinjiang. Right now, we've talked about 70% of the cotton actually is all picked by machine, and the machinization rate actually is growing very fast. And also, the a local cotton farmers should free their hands from the manual work. And just see a driver and the machine could cover these vast places and also local farmers could find other jobs uh, in the nearby factories or the uh, yarn mills so they could bring additional income to their household. 